economy you'll see everywhere in the world because it grows everywhere in the world, essentially. Um, what's interesting, and you can apply this, like we talked about last class, you can apply this methodology to white wines and red wines, for that matter, in general. What do I mean by that? Chardonnay that's grown in a cool climate, Burgundy, Chablis, Loire, northern climates, uh, northern, northern regions, maybe New York state, cool climates, have high natural acid levels, hence the reason why you see malolactic fermentation a lot with Chardonnay, because it naturally has high acid levels. Sit, remember ML, malolactic fermentation from last class? I did describe it. Converting malic acid to lactic acid makes it creamier, softer on your mouth. ML, it's short for. So cool climate has a high natural acid. I want my tool. I've got to train myself with my tool here. Um, citrus, apple, and pear flavors. All right. Now let's look at a moderate climate, meaning it's warmer. I would say a lot of California growing regions are, are more moderate, and in, in parts of Burgundy are also moderate. Chablis would be cool because it's further north. Champagne would be cool climate. Um, so you've got white stone fruits like peaches, and you also have melon. So look at the flavor difference. Citrus, apple, and pear versus peach and melon. Do you notice how those actually the flavors are riper as the climate's warmer? Peach and mel are, melon are riper fruit flavors than citrus, apple, and pear. So I think that can help you remember this. Hot climates. So you've got your tropical fruit, pineapple, banana, mango. You get a lot of those flavors in a lot of California Chardonnays. A lot of tropical fruits. Warmer climates. And again, tropical fruits relate to the climate itself. You're going to find tropical fruits and pineapples and stuff in warmer climates. Hot climates, actually. Tropical climates. Right. I mean, there's absolutely the influence, like we talked about last class, of altitude. Um, and it for sure does create a, a cooler influence on the grape varietal, for sure. So yeah, I mean, it's hard to say, hey, Carneros is only moderate climate. Absolutely. There's probably pockets of cooler and also pockets of warmer climates within that region as a whole. So it's, it's kind of a site-by-site -site basis. What we're doing here is I'm creating patterns and concepts and planning them in your mind and giving you generalizations. Of course, every, you know, a producer growing at 3,000 feet above sea level versus in the same region versus someone growing on the valley floor, you're going to have a big climate difference. And we, we kind of talked about that last week. Absolutely. Because Chardonnay naturally isn't personality plus, let's just say that, um, unlike like a Sauvignon Blanc, which has screaming personality everywhere, you know, they do a lot of adding of complex flavors to the Chardonnays to enhance the overall tasting experience. So what are those flavors created during the winemaking process? You've got ML, malolactic fermentation, dairy, creamy, buttery, remember? You get your um, dead leaves, which also can give a creamy, savory flavor. Remember lees, surly aging we just talked about? Lees is the plural, surly. Lees is what we call it here in, in America. So your dead yeast cells. And then toast, nut, vanilla flavors from your oak. So there's many things you can do to Chardonnay to make it taste more complex, to add layers of flavor to the wine. That's what I mean by complex. So you can do ML. Surly aging or oak, or all three, which a lot of New World producers do, quite I'd say 80% of the time. It's, you, and if they don't, they'll advertise. It'll be unoaked, unwooded, as they call it in Australia, Chardonnay. Means no oak. Well, maybe there's still surly and maybe there's ML. And you know, what I find challenging is that information isn't on the bottle, which is annoying. And it's not always online, so you don't really know unless you picked up the phone and called the winery and asked, how did you make that wine? So it's, it's hard as you know, someone putting together tasting notes for wines and for you guys to know exactly what to expect from the wine. Because unlike Europe, 
where it's regulated, right? We talked about this. In the new world, you don't have the rules. So you don't really ever know what you're getting until you get to know a producer in a style on your own. I mean, it really is, a, you gotta try it before you know. Chardonnay is blended, not all the time, but sometimes it can be blended. And when it is blended, they do a lot of this in Australia. They blend with semillon, and, and right here you can see, like we talked about, semillon Chardonnay, there's more semillon than there is Chardonnay, right? This is Australia, Southeast Australia. Um, and and semillon kind of adds a nice viscosity to the wine, a nice mouthfeel, adds weight, um, almost glycerol sort of aspect to it. Um, <clears throat> The flavor of semillon isn't that strong, but it's a good ager. Like the, f the flavor of semillon develops well over time. So we're gonna talk a little bit about Bordeaux today and Sauterne, and the main grapes of a Sauterne are Sauvignon Blanc and Semillon. Now Sauvignon Blanc on its own does not age well. It becomes cabbagey and more vegetal flavory. It just doesn't, it, it kind of doesn't, the flavors don't, the flavors of a Sauvignon Blanc aren't desirable for long-term aging. But when blended with Sauvignon like they do in Bordeaux, it actually does have a desirable flavor profile when aged over time. So Sauvignon's kind of the, a good, one, good grape for long-term aging and it adds a nice mouthfeel, it adds nice sort of um, creamy, interesting flavors for long-term aging. But you know, you don't usually see 100% Sauvignon anywhere, do you? No, it's not that fashionable. People don't know it, people don't crave it. You know, oh, I need that semillon today. Your wine bar doesn't carry a semillon, what? I mean, okay. Uh, what else? You blend with, uh, and, and this, is, this is kind of funny. Not funny, but interesting. Uh, in, in Australia, to, uh, if you put Chardonnay in the label, it's an easy sell across the board around the world. People know Chardonnay, they know kind of what to expect. They know the flavor profile. It's, it's something for people to understand. And it's fashionable, meaning it's a la mode. Maybe you wanna make, you don't, you wanna make a wine that's a little less expensive and a little more approachable and you wanna get more bang for your buck. You could blend with less cool grape varietals, less fashionable, like Semillon, hence the situation, like Columbard, which is a big grape, a bulk grape they use in California. You can blend with these sort of local varietals or lesser known grapes, add it to a, a prestigious grape, and you can still pretty much command a decent price, price because you're, you're kind of banking on the name of the grape that people know, like Chardonnay. Love wine? Now learn everything about it. The world of wine is unique, intriguing, and ever-changing. Are you working toward becoming a wine expert? Are you seeking a career or hoping to advance in a wine-related business? Are you just interested in learning more about wine and the world of wine? You need to take the WSET course led by wine expert Lindsay Pomeroy. The Wine and Spirit Education Trust, better known as the WSET, offers a comprehensive series of classes designed for the aspiring wine professional, a person looking to advance their career in a wine-related work environment, or anyone else who loves wine and wants to learn more about it. Learn how wine is made, how grapes are grown, the history of winemaking, and the different styles of wines available on the market today. Develop the skills and talents that will help you become a true expert in the world of wine. Under the instruction and guidance of course leader Lindsay Pomeroy, you'll come away with education and confidence in your new comprehensive knowledge of wine. Students completing the course who are planning to begin or advance a career in a wine-related profession will receive WSET certification and the prestige and respect it commands throughout the world. Love wine? Considering a career in the world of wine? Visit winesmarties.com to learn more about the WSET certification program and course instructor Lindsay Pomeroy.